You are watching Wave Watch, California's only surf show. Brought to you by John Bass with Peter Town, hosting the surfers of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Wave Watch, watch it. You are watching Wave Watch, California's only surf show. Brought to you by John Bass with Peter Town, hosting the surfers of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Wave Watch, watch it. Welcome to another Wave Watch. We've got a good show for you tonight. Uh, we've got some old Honolulu boys here, and one of them will be quite familiar to you, for, to you, Don Stroud. You see him on TV usually every Saturday night, and his old friend Wayne Miata. And uh, like I said, they uh, grew up together in Honolulu, and now they live on the mainland. They do all sorts of things like acting, make surfboards, and we're going to talk to them a little bit. And uh, then we have some exciting uh, scurfer footage with Tony Finn. And I got to know Tony through an old friend of mine from Australia, Jeff Darby who invented a, a scurfer type surfboard that they tow behind boats and uh, we were real excited about that footage we're going to have later on too. And then we were even going to delve further back into the past and we got Randy Nort on and he was the original member of the Challengers and if you can ever remember back to an old show called Surf's Up with Stan Richards, well he used to do all the original music and we're going to talk to him a little bit later on too. But before we get to that we're going to do a little bit of surf news of course. Some exciting news in the world of surfing. Uh, Tom Curran is out there in front in the world ASP ratings chase. He just won the tournament uh, in Western Australia at Perth and uh, an exciting result for Tommy and uh, I predict that Tom this may push him on to be world champion this year. You know we haven't had a new world champion for some time. Tom Carroll has won the last two and before that the great Mark Richards uh, had dominated the world two winning tour winning it four times in a row. So a uh, great result there for Tom Curran. Uh, currently the pros are in Newcastle in the world's richest surfing event. Uh, it's called the BHP Steel event and they're giving away a whopping $85,000 for surfing which is fabulous and the first prize will be $30,000 and uh, I'm sure that Tom's in the running for that. Just to back up a little bit, in that, other, in that contest that Tom won, uh, the ratings leader up until that point, Barton Lynch, was in second place and uh, is still breathing down Tom's neck 
So it's going to end up a real exciting race. Also, Tom Carroll featured well in the results. He was in fifth place. And Hawaiian Hans Heidemann. Also, Mark Ocalupo, who has been red hot on the circuit last year. So it looks like uh, with the guys in Newcastle right now, and then they go to Hawaii, uh, it looks like we're going to have an exciting run to the finish line. But I predict that Tom Curran will win this next world championship. That's about it for surf news. Uh, we're going to go to some video now. We've got uh, actually a little bit of MTV type stuff tonight. Uh, Randy nort has been kind enough to bring us some great music video. So we're going to go to that and then we'll be back in the studio with our guests. This guy here on my left, you, you know, you usually see him on TV on, uh, on Saturday nights, you know, he usually uh, jumps out from behind buildings with a gun and shoots people, and it's Captain Pat Chambers to all you out there in TV land. And uh, he's an old surf dog for all you guys that don't know, and his good friend Wayne Miata, uh, they grew up in Honolulu, and they've been surfing for a very long time, and they're still as stoked as ever, and these are all Don's boards behind us, and we're going to talk to him about a lot of different things tonight, but I'm real stoked to have you guys here tonight. Well, Thank great, you. it's fun. Thank you. <laughs> Don, I want to start off with you. Um, how did you ever get from being a Honolulu surf beach boy to be an actor on TV? I was sitting on the beach and they were doing a show called uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Eye with I Troy Donahue. <laughs> and they said, hey, can uh, someone double Troy Donahue? And I said, well, I'll try it. I was 19 years old, I had blonde hair. And so I started surfing for Troy Donahue in, in, in the old show. And I started as a stuntman and uh, came to Hollywood. And everybody said, look me up, kid. Nobody was there, of course, you know what I mean? <laughs> so. Um, uh, we, we started, Wayne, Wayne and I went to school together, and we, so it was back in Hawaii on the beach in Waikiki. I was an old-time beach boy, we went to Kaimiki High School and stuff, so we're all <laughs> local boys, you know. So when, when you got to Hollywood, um, you know, you, it must have been a big change coming from Honolulu. And well, I hung up surfing because the first place we went was down to Zuma <laughs> Beach with no wetsuits. He said, try this out. I said, oh, I, I hung it up for about five years, and I started hanging around the Sunset <laughs> Strip. I ran the Whiskey A Go Go up there because the water was too cold for me. But now I live at Rincon where the water is 55, but I've discovered wetsuits and different things like that, you know? Is it as easy today to maintain the same stoke you had as when you grew up as a kid in Honolulu? Well, you know, we, we surfed canoes and kunas and queens and uh, threes and Kaisers, Alamoana and places like that, and nine six boards, no leashes. Uh, matter of fact, Pat Curran shaped my first board. Yeah, the pintail. The pintail board, you know, no leashes. So it was uh, really different. You know, I'm writing this now where 
See, people think this is a long word, but to me it's a short word uh -huh. because I came from the 9 6 and I'm using leashes. But this is a good word for Rincon. I think it's a completely different world. I think this is the way to surf, you know, coming up the top and all those moves are real nice. Wayne, your uh, fame, you were a great surfer too, and also, but one, one of the things that I knew about Wayne Miata uh -oh. uh, was that he was a fantastic craftsman in the art of building surfboards. And, um, how did you get into that? You're from that era of, say, yeah. the, pa the other name that comes to mind are the yeah, Patterson Pat Brothers. Patterson you know? Brothers and all that. We, Go we, we all used to, everybody used to surf together in the good old days. It was one of those kind of deals where you walk out there and you look for somebody to go in the water with you because there wasn't a crowd. Mm -hmm. So everyone used to get together and surf. And then I, I started doing repairs mm -hmm. in, the, in my backyard. My in father the didn't like stuff, it. Yeah. <laughs> mom, mom didn't like the phone does. No. <laughs> in fact, I glossed the board in my mother's kitchen one time with milk <laughs> on the floor, and the, and the smell of the resin took weeks to get out. Needless uh, to say, nobody in the house was happy, but that's how it started. I think, we've all, I think we've all done that surfboard in our parents' house act. I, mean, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was, that was hilarious. And then, you know, uh, just by doing repairs and, and things like that, you got, to a little, you got a little bit better at doing what you were doing and so on and so forth, and you got to learn... Uh, you know, what, what worked, what didn't work, and so on and so forth. And finally, uh, my first job was at Surfboards Hawaii for Dick Brewer. And what I did was uh, he needed a glosser, so I lied. <laughs> I told him I knew how to gloss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I started work for him like that, and it's been going on ever since. What, what have you seen as the biggest change in the craftsmanship or the manufacture of boards in that well, period of time? just a lot of it has to do with the, uh, you know, the transition from balsa wood to foam. Now we've gone through the, to the real lightweight foams and things like that, and, and where you know you can get a six-pound surfboard now, where before everything was, uh, you know, upwards of 26, 27 pounds, mm -hmm. and if you can imagine walking from Waikiki to Ala Moana with this thing on your back, <laughs> we no, did it many times. Yeah. <laughs> to surf for, <laughs> for four <laughs> hours and have to walk back. I used to paddle that back. was painful. Mm -hmm. How many surfboards do you reckon you built? Oh. <laughs> do you have any idea? <laughs> oh, what? Let's see, 25 years, 27 years, who knows, 40,000, 50,000, something like that, something in that neighborhood. Yeah. Don, you um, did something that uh, people out there in TV land would have noticed this year too. You did some color commentary on the United States Surfing Championship. That was did fun. I got to, like for the first time with a microphone, say, well, cut to a station break. And like that. <laughs> I've never done that kind of stuff. But what's fun about it was uh, ABC is, they're, they're going to take me to Australia. I think South Africa, Hawaii, because so they'll have the amateur contest now, like uh, just like following the pros. So mm -hmm. I guess I found myself a little job. You know, they pick me up at a limousine and all this stuff. I got a four-wheel truck out there. You know, so it's plus uh, you get to go to all these exotic surf spots. Oh, there. we're gonna go to Bali, Indonesia too. Well, maybe he'll take fun. me along as his technical advisor. Bodyguard, at least, man, at least bodyguard. I'll be the technical advisor. Yeah. But that was real fun. I enjoyed that a lot. So with your hectic schedule, you know, I'm sure that you run quite a tight schedule when you're in production of Mike Hammer. Um, does it give you a lot of time to surf still? Well, I live at Rincon, which I think is one of the best places in California to surf. And uh, I live right on the beach there. So whenever, whenever I'm off, I'm out of L.A. and I get my board always with me and my wetsuit and stuff. And I stop in Malibu sometime on the way home. And I surf as much as I can, yeah. You know, people recognize you in the lineup. Does that ever help you get any waves? Well, when I, first, when, I first paddled <laughs> out to, when I first paddled out to Rincon, you know, Rincon's kind of a real kind of clickish. Click -click 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 Hey, actor, you know, you, 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 your movie's played too much here. And now four years later, five years later, hey, brah, how's it done? You know what I mean? So, you know, you got to make your moves. Just like at uh, Malibu, I paddled out to the point for the first time because I rode in the cove there with my 9.6, and then I took my shortboard out there, and everybody was like, you know, I was really, like, spooked. And I'm 6'2 from Hawaii, man. These little kids were scaring me. Now it's a different story, so you got to make your moves, you know. You were saying earlier tonight that uh, you've got a new series of Mike Hammer coming up, and you're going to... Uh, two surprise hour, us all with a new two-hour version. Two-hour movie, and if that does well, we'll go back to uh, 22 shows, and I'm hoping for that. You know, we're going to go to New York and uh, Boston and shoot a two-hour movie, yeah. There's quite a few uh, guys in the movie industry that surf. Do you, you know, you guys ever get together, you know, and talk surf? Well, you Gregory, know, you Gregory uh, Harrison, yeah. he, he surfs at Rincon, and... Uh, Jan Michael. Jan Michael, Gary Busey. But we have our longboard contest at Dewey Weber, and, yeah. and I uh, go in the celebrity heat every year. And <laughs> one year I won the the heat and then they came in the third <laughs> and but last year they didn't have the heat so i went in with the big boys and i was wiped out the first round you're you know? in my heat remember oh, <laughs> <I'm thinking. laughs> but, you know so well, there it is he comes know. walking around and goes who's in my heat who's yeah. in my heat who's in my heat who's in my heat 
<laughs> That's fun. We do it for like a like it's like a reunion. All oh, Donald Takayama. I mean, George Downing was there. All I the guys, all the guys yeah. you grew up with. It was great. It was yeah. really great. Yeah. So Wayne, you're doing uh, the Wayne Miata surfboard thing right yeah, now. Yeah, we, we have a we have a, I own a factory down there, mm -hmm. and uh, Don's you know uh, part of the partnership and, mm -hmm. and things Having like that. Business and, uh, together. Business. What we do is uh, we're, we're manufacturing boards, glassing boards for um, maybe eight or nine different people right now, mm -hmm. and I just do these on the side. You guys must you know having come from such a background as being brought up in Honolulu and the early beach beach boy era and the surfing yeah. styles and. It must amaze you to see what the kids can do today yeah. on these little short boards. Oh, these surf. It's they definitely surf. different. <laughs> see, Tommy's, Tommy's a Santa Barbara boy, so I'm rooting for Tommy up there, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. But what's good about Rincon, I mean, Willie Morris comes up there, Sean Thompson comes up there all the time. Uh, you know, I mean, well, Sean, Sean has a house up there, I understand. Yeah, but in the water, it's just great to see these guys yeah. out there in the water. So it gives me a nice buzz, and I've become friendly with these guys and stuff. It's nice. Well, thanks for coming on the show, oh, you guys. We're you. really thank happy you. we could have you on. And, uh, I appreciate it. We'll, we'll be looking for you on the new show coming up. All right. Great. So we'll be back in a little while. We're going to go to some more video now, and then we'll be back with uh, Tony Finn and his scurfer. Looks like a lot of fun. The uh, scurfing, I, I think I could actually do that. You know, like uh, it looks a little easier than say uh, snow skiing, where you got two, but you get your feet together. It's kind of like surfing, and I wouldn't mind having a go of that. Actually, the guy that designed this is an old friend of mine, Jeff Darby, and he hooked up with our guest tonight, Tony Finn, and uh, he's come here, and he is from San Diego, and uh, he's pioneering this uh, sport of scurfing here in the United States and we're really excited you could come to the show tonight Tony. Oh I'm happy to be here. How'd you ever hook up with Jeff Darby? <laughs> well I, I was in Australia and I needed a place to crash so I figured I just met him surfing and he let me stay there and then I saw that he was uh, had these board, little boards that, we, that he was going behind his boat on and I just thought it was hot. So You, you, you grew up being a surfer and everything. And yeah uh, yeah. So you'd never really done it before you ran into Derby. You just uh, decided that you'd have a go at it, and it felt pretty fun. You thought, oh, well, let's do that. Could work in America. Right, right. Well, we had before, you know, went behind our regular surfboards mm -hmm. uh, behind boats, but Derby had actually had the one designed especially for going behind a boat. And how's it working out? I mean, is it being well received? Oh yeah, it's hot. I mean, it's a lot of fun. People enjoy it. It feels like surfing, and uh, yeah, we're, you know, a lot of people, like, a lot of people are getting the opportunity to to scurf, you know, the whole country. Over well, whole you have country. an incredible um, population that's into water skiing right across oh, the United yeah. States. Yeah, there's like 17 million water skiers in the United States. That's more people than there are in Australia. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of people that can uh -huh. get, get to check it out. Uh -huh. And how hard is it to pick up? I mean, you know, I started off the thing by saying it looked like I could do that. Oh, you could, anybody could do it right away, you know, especially you. But I mean, a lot of people that have never water skied or surfed, uh, once they get on a scurfer with the proper instruction, they can start ripping pretty quickly. Is it more difficult, say, to get up on a pair of water skis than, say, to get up on the scurfer? Uh, it's, it's easier to scurf than to get up on a single ski. But it's, uh, it, if you learn the right way, it's pretty easy. You can get up right away. We just have a quick look at one of these boards here. You'll notice if you can see this, it's got um, a really strangely shaped bottom. And um, it uh, has a concave in here. And then it has a fin that uh, kind of reminds me of the America's Cup. <laughs> it, exactly. And we, in fact, patterned the fin after the uh, Australia II, the boat that won the America's Cup. And it, it helps uh, the, the, the design of the skirt for a lot, too. It really holds a tail in the water. But you can still turn it really hard, but you don't slide out. Where do you, how often do you go scurfing? I mean, is oh, it? as much as I can. I try to go every day, uh -huh. especially yeah. when it's flat, you know. And, and um, you know, what kind of conditions are best, you know? Is it, is it better when there's really, really slick conditions just like in water skiing? Yeah, yeah, the calmer the water, the better, but you can go if it's rough, you know, but the, when it's calmer, you can r really get some hard turns in there. How fast do you reckon you get going? Well, what's the fastest you've been? We've been 45 miles per hour, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's pretty hairy. We usually go around 18 or so. And, that's, and then the wake is big, because you want a big wake, so you want to get the rope a little bit shorter than uh, water skiing and go a little bit slower so the wake is bigger, and then you can just start ripping off the wakes and getting jumps and stuff. 
the original ones were made just like surfboards, right? They, oh, yeah. Um, the one that I'm holding right here, that is what, a rotationally molded Rotationally one. molded, which is super durable. Uh -huh. Like the fiberglass ones we made, you just, you know, you, they're bashing around the boat all the time, and one time you're going up for a jump, you come down and psh, smashes right underneath you. Just but like these, hit by a hard way. <laughs> yeah, but these, these can last forever. We've got boards that just last and last and last. In some, some ways, re the technology kind of reminds me of the evolution of uh, snow skiing. You know, how in the early days it was handcrafted, yeah. and then it went to a lot of molded skiing, and which is what's prevalent right now. Right, yeah, the molded board just wor works just as good as a fiberglass one, but it's, it's super durable and it's cheaper to make and cheaper to, so more people have, you know, can use them. You see, it seems to be an incredible crossover right now between, say, surfers. We have single snowboards, uh, right. the surfer. It all seem they all seem to fit together. It looks like you know a guy that's a reasonably good surfer could do all this kind of stuff. Right. Well, the whole idea is to bring surfing to everybody, you know, because it's a lot of fun to surf and surfing and uh, snowboarding, skateboarding brings a feeling of surfing to people where, you know, even if they live in Kansas or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're stoked you could come along and show us this tonight. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks <laughs> for having that me. That great footage of you ripping there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> we'll be back in a little while. We're going to go to a classic uh, re-recording of the famous song Wipeout by the Safaris. And then our guest back in the studio will be Randy Nord, who uh, played on that new recording. Herman, right. what do you want to do today? Well, surfing or music? What do you reckon? Let's play music for a while. Okay, I know, great song. Drum song, famous in the States. Yeah. Goes like this. I know that song. I recorded that 20 years ago. Oh, oh come on. Did yeah. you? Did? Yeah. Remember it's... Uh... Well, that's a pretty wild video. You, you know that that song was recorded a long time ago, and the gentleman sitting beside me, he was one of the original players on that uh, recording. His name's Randy Nort, and uh, just before I talk to him tonight, I've got to show you a couple of classic things. This thing here is uh, actually the first surf music album, and it was called Surf Beat, and it's since been re-released, but this is actually an original version right here. And one of the other things that I wanted to show you was, this is pretty classic, but this is the roots of Wave Lights right here. This was the album from the old surf show called Surf's Up with Stan Richards. And uh, the challengers used to do the music on that show. And uh, Randy, of course, played bass on that. Randy, it must feel really good after all these years to get back and re-record a, a song as famous as Wipeout. How did you get mixed up in doing that again? Well, I live out in Malibu on Broad Beach. And one of my neighbors is part of the management of the German group, the Scorpions. 
and uh, we became friends and they'd moved out from New York they were New York people so I'd take them sailing on the Hobie Cat and show them, the, show them around and this uh, German fellow showed up one night with his wife uh, she was in April penthouse and they <laughs> walk in you know very exotic and sit down and talk and say, oh David, I did this song, it's old tune, it's, but it's for the new album, it's a drum song, you like it, it's drum instrumental, it's, but it, we did it up to date, it's a song called Wipeout. And everybody got very quiet and I let him talk for a while and then I said, uh, well, you know, I, I recorded that a long time ago. I says, oh, you did? You still play the bass? And I said, uh, a little bit. And he said, well, come by the studio, try it. If it's good, I use it. And I said, now Herman, uh, I played on the real thing. You want me to audition for an, <laughs> for an imitation? He said, okay, okay, you be the judge, you like it. So uh, Eddie Van Halen, he plays the leads, you know, sequence of Lange really grabs you deep, you know. <laughs> so I did it and uh, it came out pretty good. They moved it from C to heavy metal A and the bass now plays the melody. And then uh, Herman wanted to do a video and so we used my house and recruited the uh, girls from around the pool and, uh, and did it. And then I took him sailing on the Hobie Cat because he couldn't really surf. There's not a lot of beachfront property in uh, Germany. And we took him out in a, about a six foot day and, and uh, wiped him out, tore the mast off the Hobie Cat. He says, I said, now Herman, you've recorded it. Now you've experienced the wipeout. He says, oh, that's great. Can we do that again? <laughs> it was about a $250 crash. The rudders broke and a few other things. But You, you know, know um, like I said in the introduction, the, the the old show surfs up with Stan Richards. Um, I'm sure things have changed a lot since the days of when you were doing a TV show and surfing, what, that would be 20 years ago now. Yeah, most of it, uh, you mean musically or? Uh... Well, in both ways, the way, the, in those days it was all longboards and uh, <coughs> musically, actually, you know, lately... I still ride a longboard. <laughs> well, you know, we all do at times. Oh yeah. I like to do drop knee turns. Malibu's nice. I grew up in Palos Verdes, so I'm goofy foot. So I complain about the coastline because it's all rights in Malibu except for a few spots. But um, yeah, the boards have changed, music's changed. That first album you showed we did in three and a half hours and it was a uh, two track. And the last- none of, none of these things where you come in and just play the bass part and then you add it in later on. It was just in the studio and record yeah. the song. <laughs> we did, we, yeah, we did just a live show. We went and set up our equipment and they put the mics down and we did our show and we did the songs two or three times and then they put them together with a piece of tape and that was the record and it came out and did about 200,000 units in uh, 62. That was quite a few records then. Of course, we didn't get paid. You know, um, one of the things that's real, real interesting to me is uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, surf music has kind of influenced a lot of people today. You know, mm -hmm. e even today people look back and the guitar solos, the, the, the beat that surf music had, you still see it surfacing in a lot of things that are done today. Uh, mm -hmm. You were saying a little while ago that Elvis Costello, for instance, is a surf music fan. Right. He, uh, we just did that repackage and uh, for his label, he's a connoisseur of good music <laughs> and he wanted to have a good album of surf music so he did 18 of our songs and it just came out in England this summer. It's not available here but the English are more into uh, surfing. Have, have you been to England lately and seen all the no. boards on cars? Cornwall is they, there. Well of course you know they have the professional event. I haven't been there for well, since the 70s but yeah. you know they have a big professional event there in the over year. Yeah. I'm sure it's a big status thing now to have the surfboard on the car. Yeah water's cold there. I was there <laughs> summer before last. It was freezing but uh, but it, it's good, it's nice to, and the music is simple, and I think good music, uh, good popular music has high energy and uh, simple, and, uh, and, and that's what a lot of groups do. The, the bass player in the Moody Blues is a friend of mine. He always claims the Moody Blues are really a surf band, but uh, English. You still surf a lot, but uh, do you play a lot of music still too? I produce and uh, publish songs and uh, manage uh, artists. And I play a little bit. Herman made me practice, though. It's, it's a lot of hard work, you know. The, the Scorpions work very hard, and they're, they're a great group. And they play the same kind of high metabolism music that we used to do. And I just as soon let them go out and tour 200 dates a year. Although I did enjoy going to Rio. The girls and the beaches there are pretty nice. Water's nice, too. So where do you get in the water these days when you're out there doing your drop-knee turns, as you like to do? Mostly Malibu. We have a, there's a couple other... Uh, guys that I've grown up with out there, John Van Hammersveld and a few others, and 
We, uh, you know, you drive in and out of Hollywood to do your record business stuff. You have uh, 24 miles of coastline, so you get to check out the waves. And some days, you know, you don't quite make it all the way. <laughs> or you stop on the way home. You know, Malibu is a nice place. I'm sure you've surfed there quite a bit. Yeah, I've surfed there a few times. It's a fantastic wave. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I think we were neighbors but didn't know it for a while. Up there. <laughs> you don't always know all your neighbors in Malibu. Everyone's very discreet, <laughs> right? Well, we're stoked you could come on the show and uh, impart upon us some of this great history about surf music and and, uh, Thank you. A little bit of the old uh, surf tunes from the challenges. Great. Thank you. It's a pleasure. That was a great show and a great interview with Randy North and uh, some real history there about surf music and the old uh, surfing show Surfs Up. We're going to close over a video tonight, that uh, another video that Randy bought us and uh, we'll be back with another great show next week. I knew is there a life another life to come help my soul don't you know life isn't that long I have to know so help me please before I've gone 